Hey guys, Mary here with GameSpot Presents The Mix at E3 2015. I'm here with Leo from Arachnid Games. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, and you are here to show us Deluvian. Yeah. This is a pretty fascinating game. It looks pretty big, so I want to make sure that we start looking at it right away. Um, this always surprises me. It looks, it looks like it's 2D, <laughs> but that's <Right>. a lie. <laughs> Deluvian is a fully 3D open world game. Oh my gosh. Where you explore the oceans of a flooded world. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually mixed the 3D gameplay with 2D, where you can look inside your sub. It's and really stunning it. to see that. When you go back to two, 2D again, just so you can see it. Yeah. I mean, it's really amazing the tech that probably went into that to be able to make that happen. It was tricky. And you, you're a small team, right? Uh, you're a four, four person team? Yes, we were a four person team. Well, that's pretty unbelievable. All right, so what are you doing in this, uh, in this ship exploring this vast open world? Looks like you're underwater here, just like exploring uh, the city. Yeah, so in Deluvian, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, the main focus is our exploration, building your crew, and uh, finding things to loot and salvage. Uh, there's also a pretty in-depth sub-to-sub combat system. Okay. Um, to be effective in combat with your sub, You'll need to salvage a lot of rare resources because your weapons will use those up. Now, when you're in combat, you're in 3D, correct? Correct. Okay, but um, all these interactions are all done in 2D. Yeah, so anytime you're interacting with other members of the world or your own crew, you'll be in the 2D cutaway view. And so what are you trying to do right now? You're trying to get some, you're trying to get these people to join you? <laughs> yeah, so here we're at the Dweller Colony, just talking to the citizens here and seeing what they're up to. Some of them, might be willing to join our crew. Some of them might just have quests for us to go do. Okay. Yeah. And, and when you pick up quests, uh, what kind of things can you get out of that? Items and currency, or? You can get items, currency. You might find new crew members there. You might find entirely new submarines mm -hmm. by completing quests. And um, you have to ask, I just have to ask, because the world is so big, like, it does have boundaries, right? Like, you can hit the end of this yeah. so-called world. Yes. All right, and when that happens, is it just like, it becomes like a, almost like a Truman Show type thing where you just hit it and you go, oh, I've, I've reached the end. That's so when you get to the boundaries of our world, it actually takes you to the world map, mm -hmm. which there's a number of different zones that you can explore. Uh, each zone is very large. This is just one zone that we're showing here. Uh, the scale size of it is roughly two square kilometers. Oh, my God. Yeah. And is there in this, op uh, in this world, uh, there are possible creatures that you can come across or anything that can harm you or help you? Yes. So there's a number of creatures. We, we started with a basis of just uh, sea creatures that you would normally see, and then we mutated them like crazy. Um, there's a number of creatures that are... Sea creatures already look mutated. They already are terrifying. <laughs> we there's that. already some like really but gross stuff down there. Yeah. <laughs> you just add a few more tentacles to it. Absolutely, and make it bigger and scarier. And more nightmarish. Yeah, there was a, I saw a teaser earlier for, it looked to be like some kind of real creepy monster. So it looks like there's all sorts of scary stuff down there. But uh, if you fight it in combat, uh, I assume that can help you maybe get more items that you might need for your ship in combat or just Absolutely. to help you in your journey. Yeah. Um, defeating one of the larger creatures will actually be um, sort of a bounty. So if you defeat it, you'll be rewarded greatly. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, so what are you guys doing now? So this is a target field that uh, the Royal Military is used to test their weapons. So we're out here blowing their stuff up um, to try out our own weapons on the lionfish. All right. Yeah. So there's a number of different weapon types. The lionfish. Oh, you're using sonar right now. Yes. All right, and that's a pretty sweet skill just to see maybe if there's anything coming your way. Sonar is absolutely necessary if you're going to survive in this world. Because with sonar, you can see beyond your visual range. Mm -hmm. And if there's any dangers out there, they'll become immediately apparent to you. It also looks really cool when you're doing it in the game, too. Like it's just yeah, a it's really nice effect. Going. <laughs> uh, what kind of journeys you're going to be going on? So there's a number of different areas, um, different depth levels of the ocean. So at the top of the ocean, you'll actually see it capped off by ice. Uh, there's some towns up there carved out of ice that you can go up to and talk to the citizens in there. Um, if you go to the mid-ocean, it's more of the uh, built-up civilizations. If you go down deep, you'll actually find a lot of scary creatures, much more danger, much more pirates ready to... Oh, pirates! There's pirates in the game as there well. There are pirates. That's so actually what just killed us. How <laughs> many things try to help you in the game? <laughs> so 
help will usually come in the form of crew members. Okay. Because the more crew members you have on your ship, the more effective it is. How many crew members do we currently have? So if we check out the inside of our sub, uh, we currently have six crew members. Okay. A little sparse. Our, I'm sorry? A little sparse for a crew. Not too many people yet. Yeah. Well, this is one of the smaller submarines. The larger ones, you can have much more crew members. Right. So there's different stations of the sub that will actually affect the different components of your submarine. So this is the navigation, and he's adding more crew to that, okay. which will actually allow you to have more waypoints and um, give you more info around the so world. So where you allocate people will benefit you in various ways, yes. especially when you're low on resources. Absolutely. Okay. So you can determine how you want to play by where you put your crew members. And how hard is it to come across crew members? Is this like something that you will, like, accruing one person is a big deal, or will it you? It is a big deal, okay. more so than salvaging some equipment. Um, when you get a crew member, they'll either Damn be pirates. <laughs> they'll either be crew or officers. Officers are like the big, the big ones because they can really affect your sub. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what happens? When you, you can you lose crew members if you're a jerk or if they just don't like you anymore, <laughs> or uh, you just accumulate? They will die if it, if if you. Um, you can kill your crew. Can they mutiny? So we don't have plans for mutiny <laughs> yet. We, we actually did talk about that. In Technically this dying is mutiny. System. <laughs> so the, uh, when the sub gets hit, sometimes it can kill off your crew members. Your officers won't die because they're too important to how your sub operates. And just in like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the important people don't die. They just don't die. <laughs> they're actually in your bridge. OK. So that's the most protected part of your submarine. Uh, the crew members that you have out in your different stations of the sub. In the danger they, zones. Yeah, the danger zones. They actually can die, and it's, it's a big deal. You'll oh have man. to go out and find more crew to replace them. Yeah, and you'll be even uh, slower with resources, and that probably just makes the whole process much more difficult. Yeah, so here we've wandered into a minefield. Okay. Which, uh, these mines actually warn you when you get close to them, like, hey. Well, that's really nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like there's a lot to uncover here, and we're barely scratching the surface. But I do want to quickly mention you do currently have a quick Kickstarter going on right now. Is that true? That's correct. Okay. Uh, we're about halfway to our funding goal. It goes till July 2nd. All right. So thank you so much. That was Deluvian, and you can check out their Kickstarter now. And for everything else game-related, be sure to head to GameSpot.com. Thank you.